Today is June 14th. It has been less than four weeks since my daughter Rachel picked up her two nukes from Cox Honey in Shelly, Idaho. We are over here to take the nuke from the hive on the right and put them in their new house, which will be converting them from 10 frames to 8 frames and check the strength of the hive and see if they need some more space. Immediately upon coming here, I could see that we've got a traffic jam in the front of the hives. So I'm going to recommend that she remove the interest reducers in her hives. The activity level looks great. It is a calm, semi-clear day, slightly cloudy, very little wind, uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, lots and lots of activity here on these beehives. I have a feeling that we're going to love what we find when we get inside. Rachel's over here lighting her smoker. You can see she's got a nice soft smoke coming out. So she is ready to go over there and, and get the bees settled down. You can see she's completely stuffed her smoker all the way to the top as tight as she can to make sure that she's got lots of fuel in there so that smoker will last a long time as we're working on the hives. She's getting the smoke right in front of the doorway there, kind of settled them down a little bit. And then she's going to give a little bit of smoke here on the top. Give them a few seconds and then start working the hive. Even with the smoke, the bees did not start fanning heavily. They didn't get irritated. So we're in a good position now to work with the bees. Okay, she just opened it up and now we're looking to see what's going on in here. These, uh, every one of these frames is full, completely pulled out. This is the first frame. You can see that it is full. We've got capped larvae here and larvae. We've got honey here. We've got pollen here. So this is the outside frame. They are using every cell in this frame. I imagine that's going to be the situation throughout the whole box here. And we will definitely need to give them another box full of empty frames. As a general rule, when 70% of the frames are filled with something is when you give them more space to grow. Those cells could be filled with honey, pollen, Larvae, worker bee larvae, it doesn't make any difference. If they're running out of room to prevent them from swarming, you need to give them more space to grow. So what Rachel's doing right now is we're just going to quickly go through this hive and check most, if not every, frame. And we're also at the same time looking for supersedure cells. If this hive has been so active, that they've run out of space, they may be thinking about swarming, so we'll check on that. We checkerboarded this box when we moved the beehive to the new home here. So in addition to checking the frames to see how full they are, we're also going to see if they've been pulling the comb on the new foundation. So here's one of the new frames. It had a plastic foundation on it. It has a wood frame, and you can see here that they have pulled comb all the way across the frame. And here on the other side, they've done the same thing. And we have honey over here on the upper right hand side. So the queen is very active and so is the hive. Excellent. This is the fifth frame, full of honey, full of capped worker bee larvae. Got some drones in here. Everything's looking great. Here is the other new frame on the second box and it has been completely pulled and they are putting honey all the way through this one here and if you look right in the center you'll see all the little eggs right in the middle of each of the cells. So this is classic textbook honey on the edges, nectar right here and larvae in the center or eggs in the center so they have all the food they need for the new babies when they hatch. I don't know anything that I would want to be any different than this than what we're seeing here. It's just beautiful. 
So we found out what we needed. Uh, we do need to add a new box and a bunch more frames. So we will do that. We're just putting things back in the way that we found it. And we'll check the bottom here real quickly just to make sure we don't have any supersedure cells. Then we'll put the box on top. The tone of the hive just changed. We could hear that immediately. And uh, that means we've been in this hive a little bit too long. They're getting a little aggravated with us messing around in their business. We do need to check to make sure we don't have supersedure cells in the bottom. So we'll give them some smoke, calm them down a little bit, and then check for the supersedure cell. We took the top box off and now we're at the bottom box we're going to check for supersedure cells she's just lifting it up we're going to give it some smoke in here so we can see and see they pulled comb which means they need more space but there are no supersedure cells here we see some beginning of ones here and here and here but that's not a problem what we should probably do is clean that off and uh, put them back in just to keep a clean hive and to thwart any uh, desire to swarm here if that if we can thwart it at all so we'll take off frames three five and seven clean that off or what we can or what we can do is simply take our hive tool and scrape it off. Now, if you want to scrape yours off or you want to leave it on, it's totally up to you. I like a clean hive and I simply remove it. Now, if this hive wants to swarm, there's no really stopping it. If it's already made it, it's already turned the corner and decided to do that it will swarm. Uh, this may prevent it if they haven't really committed to it. And that's kind of our hope here. There are two schools of thought here. We can put the new empty box with the empty frames on it in the center of these two boxes and let the queen have resources above and below and be able to quickly pull the, pull the comb and uh, start laying eggs and doing stores or we can put the new box on top of these two existing boxes, which is more traditional because it's less work. Which is better? It's really up to uh, opinion and the beekeeper. Rachel has opted to put the new box in the center of the two existing boxes, which I think is a great idea. I think that's a better solution than putting it on top. There is a theory that bees will uh, move up well, they do if that's where the resources are. But in reality, bees in nature move down because they started in the middle of a tree at the top and they build a comb down. Here we're putting the box in the center where they have resources above and below. The next better step would be to checkerboard this center box uh, with old and new frames. I think that would be a better solution. But this hive is so strong it is extra work, it is extra time. We've been in here a long time. And so I think this will work great. I don't see any downside to maybe taking, a, other than taking a few more days for the bees to build out this center box. So in less than a month, this hive has doubled and we could have easily put this box on last week or the week before and they would have tripled in that three, four week period. Now we're going to go ahead and transfer the bees from the old new box to the new home here that Rachel's going to provide. We'll be checkerboarding this one, so watch the previous video in this Rachel beginning beekeeping series on how we checkerboarded the original hive. We'll be doing the same to this one. So we've taken the 10 frames out of the top box. We already had bumped this hive up to two boxes using checkerboarding. Same situation in this hive as the previous hive. All the frames have been pulled. They're storing honey in the new frames and also laying eggs in the new frames. Because we are going from 10 frames to 8 frames, there are two frames left over in the original top box. Those go in this box here. And we are keeping 
the frames in the same order that we're taking them out of the previous box. Again, just another textbook perfect frame here. Larvae in the center, resources on the outside. Beautiful. This is from the bottom box, one of the new frames. You can see how they built out the sails. And you can see how the center here are full of larvae. Here they're more mature than the larvae down here. And then we probably have eggs a little bit further out or at least younger larvae. So the queen is here has laid larvae in all of these cells. Even though the cells aren't done, they're big enough for the queen to be laying. She is an active layer. This is a very, very good queen. Here's the next frame. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. We're seeing that frame after frame. Rachel's moved the old box off of the location and is putting in the new house here. She's got the landing board on. She's got the screen bottom board, which I really like. We're not using the plastic underneath it right now because it's very warm. We're just letting all the garbage fall through the screen, which also helps keep the hive a little bit cooler in this nice warm weather we're having. Now she's putting the um, bottom box on, which was the bottom box from the original hive. One thing you'll notice different on these boxes here is that she bought a beginner kit which had the boxes already assembled and you can see they were nailed here and then to save some money on her last order she bought unassembled boxes nailed them together and stained them which we'll cover in a minute and put a finish on them so if you want to save some money buy some unassembled boxes very easy to put together and save some money. The honeybees have been very calm the whole time. A lot of, lot of honeybees here, but uh, I like the nature. It's a good queens. A uh, little bit of smoke helped, but uh, they are just busy, busy, busy bees, bringing in pollen and nectar. In order to get the remaining bees out of the original nuke, we will be shaking them or hitting the box to get the bees to go to their new home. As you can see now we're taking the brush and gently brushing them out of the box trying to get them to go to their new home. We set the uh, original nuke down in front of the uh, new hive for the bees to fly out and enter the new hive on their own. You may have noticed that I slid the telescoping cover forward when I put the cover on over there and I slid this one forward too because on the Brushy Mountain boxes they have a top entrance and we have enough bees here that I think they can guard both entrances easily and give them easier access to the top and bottom of the hive. Rachel is donning her brand new bee suit there's several different features that she liked about it and the gloves. So tell us about your decision on getting this particular suit. I got this particular suit because it's ventilated, which helps keep me cool in the warm weather here in Idaho. The gloves I got are goat skin, which are a lot softer than the cowhide. They're a lot more pliable, easy to work with. I can feel a lot better, more dexterity. Um, the particular hat that I got, I chose this because the hat I used previously kept falling forward in my face and it was I was always pushing it back. This stays quite snug on my head and um, I'm not adjusting it all the time and it's not a distraction as I work with the bees. These English garden hives are beautiful hives, especially if you stain them. 
So let's talk about what she's done in making these highs even more beautiful, be part of her backyard garden art. Here's the uh, wood stain that I decided to use on my boxes. It is a Minwax Colonial Maple color. And after applying two coats of the wood stain, I applied the Minwax Helmsman Spar Urethane in order to protect it against the elements outside. On top of the wood stain you can see a piece of cloth. It is just a cut up old shirt that I had. It helps create a smooth finish over the boxes. Over here you can see the boxes that I got that contained all of my unassembled boxes and frames. It is really easy to assemble the boxes if you choose to go that route. It saves you several hundred dollars in your order. All you need to do is just go buy the nails from Home Depot and slip the pieces of wood together and nail them together. And then I stack them up on top of each other and applied the stain all in one sitting. I also purchased a cheap disposable paintbrush for applying the urethane. I found that it is really hard to clean out the paintbrush after using it. It's just more cost effective to buy a cheap one and throw it away after you're done. As mentioned before by my father LDS Prepper, uh, this is my first year being a beekeeper. I was kind of unexpectedly thrown into it but have loved it ever since I started. It is a lot easier than I anticipated and it's the learning is fun and easy and if you are hesitant or wondering if you can do it I'd say give it a shot. It, it's something you can pick up relatively easy and quick and the benefits are wonderful. I'm greatly looking forward to the honey and as LDS Prepper has mentioned before, one of the best things you can do is join a beekeeping association where you can find fellow beekeepers that can help you learn and teach you everything you need to know. I'm grateful for my mentor and look forward to continuing learning everything I need to in order to be a successful beekeeper. This is Iron Maiden and LDS Prepper signing off. Good luck with your bees.